Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to migrate from the legacy input action to the new Unreal Engine enhanced input. I'm going to be utilizing Unreal Engine 5.3 and using the third person shooter kit as my base project. So for starters, I have the enhanced input folder with the required files available on my GitHub. Uh, please download those. You want to copy that into the third person kit blueprint folder. This is inside of the Windows Explorer. And then when we open up the Unreal Engine editor, uh, we can see the enhanced input folder through content, third person kit, blueprints, enhanced input. From here, we can see that there are three folders, actions, configs, and mappings. Inside of the actions, we have all of the action files. Um, the naming convention is IA for input action underscore then the name of the action. So looking at the first one here, we have IA aiming. This is a uh, value type digital Boolean. So we're going to use this for aiming and the value being true or false. So when we hold down the aiming button, uh, IA aiming value will be true. When we let go of the aiming button, it will be false. We have additional mapping that is going to be of a different type. So for example, if we look at IA movement, we can see that this is an axis 2D or vector 2D. So this value type has uh, two axes, so X and Y axis. And we can use this to be able to track forward, backwards, left and right movement. Moving into the config folder, we just have the base file that's needed to be able to set up the default uh, mappings for user settings. So for example, in your game, you want the user to be able to set their own uh, mappings. You can have that set. I do not go over that in this tutorial though. Next is the mapping file. We have the gamepad mapping and we have the default um, keyboard mouse mapping. And so starting with IA aiming, we can see we have the right mouse button mapped. And so what the mappings allow us to do is take keys and buttons and map those to the required action. And so we can do this per input device. So keyboard, and mouse, gamepad, joystick, steering wheel, and so on. Um, the, as I said before, IA aiming is Boolean type. So we just have the right mouse. We have no modifiers on it. It's just being sent whenever the mouse is being, uh, the right mouse button is being pressed or released. Uh, if we look at the IA movement, as I mentioned, this was a 2D vector type. Um, we can see that we have WASD for up, down, left, right, or forward, backward, left, right. And so we're gonna look at the left and right first uh, with right D having zero modifiers. So this is the basic, um, uh, behavior that comes from the 2D vector. And so D is going to be moving right. So this will be positive on the X axis. If we want to move left, uh, we know we're map A and that here we have a modifier for negate. So we're going to negate the value. And so that'll allow us to be able to move left. And then we have the same for W and S for moving forward and backwards. And so instead of uh, playing on the X value, we need to switch to the Y value. So we have this modifier called swizzle input axis values. So that allows us to just change the axis. So W is now on the Y axis and default is positive. So positive Y is going to move us forward. Um, so when we look at S for being able to move backwards, we have negate. So this will take it from positive X to negative X and then swizzle, which will take it from negative X to negative Y because we're switching the X and Y value the X and Y axis. So now we have a negative Y, which when we press S will allow us to move backwards. And so then we have this ability um, as well with the arrow keys up, down, left, right. Um, the look with the mouse is also a 2D vector, uh, but we're grabbing the X and Y value from the mouse. And then our modifier is to negate. And so what this negate does is it pitches the, or it, it changes the pitch value so that way when we press forward on the mouse the aiming or the look goes up and when we pull down on the mouse the look or the aiming goes down um, otherwise if we didn't have the negate 
forward on the mouse would go down, backwards on the mouse would go up. We don't need to do any additional changes here. Um, the third person shooter kit does have values to be able to handle if we want to switch the pitch. Um, the final stuff that we need to do before moving into enabling our enhanced input is uh, we can go into the project settings and we can scroll down to input. And we can see that we do have our um, mappings and we have the access and action mappings are not deprecated. Please use the enhanced input actions and input mapping contacts and set. So we want to make sure that we have our um, plugin set up properly. So we can scroll down to where we have input or in the search, we can type enhanced input and we can see the enhanced input uh, plugin we want to have enabled in my project default project for Unreal Engine 5.3. It's already enabled. Um, your mileage may vary, so just make sure that it's set. And then with that, we can now move into being able to set our enhanced input project. Okay, so now we are going to get started on actually going through and setting up our project to be able to utilize the enhanced input. And so the disclaimer I'm going to have up front is that this is a time intensive process. So uh, just, just kind of keep that in mind. So I'm going to go over the first couple of examples and then I will kind of speed through all of the other input actions as we go. But I will stop and call out some of these special cases along the way as we get everything going. So to get everything everything started, we need to go into our uh, base character here. So uh, BP player character, if I can spell. So open up the player character base. And so the first thing we need to do is go into our event graph. I'm just going to clean up this stuff real quick. Okay, so we're going to go into our event graph and then we are going to scroll up into our initial settings here. And so what we need to do is we need to make the changes so that way we can start loading our enhanced input. So I'm just going to drag this thing out. Um, and then what I need to do is get controller. Oh, I don't want to comment. So we're going to get the controller and then we're going to cast to player controller. And then we're going to add our mapping, our, our mapping context. If you end up creating multiple um, uh, mappings, like additional mappings, then you can feel free to add more in here. So we have our mapping context. And then from here, we're going to take our as player controller. We're going to grab the enhanced input. Uh, player subsystem and then I'm just gonna clean this up real quick oh. and so then here we're gonna drag this out to the target that we have for these various things There we go. So now we have this set. So when we load in uh, into the game and we start our begin play, we're going to go and we're going to load these mapping settings. And so what we need to do from this point is be able to set the settings that we want. And so we're going to select our asset. We're going to load our keyboard and mouse, and then we'll load our gamepad. And so um, generally, I'll do the keyboard as priority zero and the gamepad as priority one. So the keyboard and mouse will override the gamepad. 
um, you, you don't have to do that. Uh, but that's just my own my own personal preference because uh, uh, PCMR or whatever. Um, and then that's the basic for setting this part up. So now we can save. And then now we need to add a new function to be able to get the action press keys. So uh, what we're going to do now is we have to create a new function. So we're going to click on function here. And we're going to create it and we're going to name it um, get action pressed keys. And then again, we're going to start with getting the controller. Should be able to. Yep. Okay. So we're good. Okay. So now I'm going to cast to player controller. And then I want to make this pure. This is the one I got my steps mixed up. So convert to pure cast. And then I'm going to drag out and grab the enhanced input local player subsystem. And then I'm going to query keys query keys okay so I probably need to get rid of the context here uh, map to action message I'm going to grab the input throw it into the target and then I'm going to change this part so we need to be able to grab a key or grab an action so here we are going to add an input and inside of the input we're going to name this action and then we're going to change the type to input action. And then we also need to add an output here. So the output is going to be the keys pressed or press keys. And then we're going to change it to a key. And then from key, we're going to make it an array. So now we're going to return an array of keys when we're completed here. So now, since we have this, we're going to do a for each loop. So what we're going to do is go through. Uh, so what we're doing is grabbing the controller, casting it to the player controller, grabbing the um, local player subsystem. We're going to grab an action. Uh, that comes in and then we're going to find the keys that are mapped based off of the action and then for each object in this loop we're going to need to add to a list but I forgot so we need to come down here and add a local variable local variable so local pressed keys I'm going to change it from a boolean to a key and then Come over here and then take it from a singleton to an array of keys. And so then we're going to add unique. And so add unique allows us to be able to add a unique value to uh, an array. And so we're going to grab uh, the local keys pressed. And then throw that in here. We're going to grab the array element. And then that's going to be the key that we're throwing in here. And then when we are completed, we are going to do this return node. And then what we also need to do is be able to get this, um, the local keys pressed, and then we're going to return that to here. So um, in, in the end, if we're going to get our controller. We're going to cast to a player controller. We're going to grab the enhanced input. Uh, local player subsystem. We're going to receive an action. And then we're going to query the keys that are mapped to this action based on the enhanced input. And then for each key that comes through here, we're going to add to the local press keys. And then when we're completed, we're going to return the array of local press keys. So that way we know what keys are mapped to an action. So we don't have to keep track of keys at all anywhere in our code, um, whether the action is a keyboard or a game controller, a joystick, a 
steering wheel or any other type of um, user input device that you set up to your computer, it is able to get whatever the mappings are because we have the mapping files that we set up earlier. Uh, we don't have to track was the shift key pressed, was T pressed, was the left mouse button pressed. Okay, so we'll let this auto save here. <clears throat> okay, so next we need to add our initial key mappings. And so what we need to do for this is um, scroll back up here and we're going to close our functions. And what we are going to need is our variables here. So if we look at our uh, TPS input keys, we have a bunch of these singleton input keys, which we are not going to be utilizing um, any further as we as we go through and do this. So what we need to do is create our our replacements. And so you can just right click and we can add new variable. So the first one we're going to add is weapon fire input key. And so then here we know it's a list of keys. Um, and then we just want to change the category drop down to TPS input keys. And so what that does is it moves it up into this TPS input keys category. So it's easier for us to find. Uh, we're going to do the same thing, add another variable. We're going to name this one aim input key. Again, uh, a type key array. And then we want to change the category to TPS input keys. So that way, now it's right up there next to the weapons fire input key. And then the last one we want to make is going to be crouch input key. And again, uh, type key array, and then the category we're going to change to TPS input keys. So now we have weapons fire input key, aim input key, and uh, crouch input key. Okay, so I want to rename these because I want to have the underscore here. Perfect. Awesome. Okay. So now since we have this set up, um, everything is looking good up to this point. So now we need to be able to set the value of these uh, arrays at runtime. And so in order to do that, we're going to go back to the event graph. And then we are going to go to, uh, we need to modify the um, event possessed. Um, and so what we have to do here is be able to set the key bindings when the, the pawn is possessed. Otherwise, um, the player character won't pick up any of the key mappings. And so we're just going to slide this out of the way for now. Just so we have a little bit of room, we'll bring it back when we're done. And so what we want to do is pull this out. We're going to set, or we can just um, grab the weapons fire, set, grab the aim input, set, and grab the crouch input, set. And so we're just going to connect all these. Oh. Okay, and so next we need to use uh, grab that function that we just created so get action pressed keys oh pure right there bam there we go okay so i got to figure it out now okay so we're gonna pull out the uh press keys i'm gonna make three copies of this And so then we're just going to throw this into each one here. And then the first one we're going to set to I weapon fire. The second one we're going to do IA aiming. And then the next one we're going to do IA crouch. And so now what we're doing is we're going to get the list of keys that are mapped to this action. And then we're going to set this array of keys so that way we can have access to it uh, later on. So we don't need to have all of this kind of just sitting here um, taking up space. So what we can do is we can collapse nodes. And so it'll create this little node here so we can set 
and put keys on it. Just to change the name. Um, oh, I don't want to do that. And we'll just bring it in a bit closer. Now we can close that part off and then bring this bad boy back in. And then now we're done with that part. Okay, fantastic. Okay. So now we have a couple more things we need to modify. So we're going to modify the is holding uh, function, right? And so inside of the is holding functions, uh, we'll start with uh, aiming, for example. So inside of here, we're grabbing the legacy uh, key mappings. We're checking the keyboard and the game excuse me, and the gamepad, which is really redundant. We don't need to be doing um, any of that. So what we are going to do is just um, change the basics of what we're getting here. So we can get rid of a whole bunch of this stuff. And so then uh, now what we want to do is we're going to, is holding, uh, is holding aiming key. We're gonna grab the controller and if the player controller is valid, then what we want to do, I'm gonna break this note, uh, break this link here. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, do a for each loop. And then we wanna get the aim input key. And then we want to do a branch here. And then we want to grab this uh, is input key down. We can grab the element, which would be a single key. We can check to see if it is down. And then uh, if it's not valid, we're just going to return uh, false. We don't need to go through and check everything else. Um, so now we can return this as our branch condition. And then on true, we're going to set a variable, but we need to create the local variable. So we're going to create the variable as is pressed. And now we can set it. And so if we find true that it's pressed, we don't need to check everything else. We can just return. Otherwise, if we complete, then is pressed is going to be false because we haven't changed it to true. And then we can just um, return the, the is key down uh, f false. And so here um, we just, again, we need to bring in our local Boolean get is pressed and then we'll return that value for figuring out if the key is actually pressed or not. And so we're gonna basically repeat this for all of the other um, is holding actions. What we can do is just copy this, right? Because everything's basically gonna be the same. Um, but in doing so, we do need to make sure that we make a change first before we do everything else. So if we do is holding again, and we'll open up is holding shot key. The first thing I want to do is create that local variable is pressed. That way, when I delete the rest of the stuff and paste it, um, what I can do is that is pressed is being referenced to this value. If I didn't, I would have to add the Boolean, the, the Boolean local variable, then delete the set and the get and then reinsert it. It's just a little bit extra uh, redundant work here. Um, and so then here, instead of um, doing the aiming, we're just going to grab the, um, we are in shot key, so this is gonna be the weapons fire. Weapon uh, S, weapon fire input key. Grab that. Oh. Okay, so that looks good to me here. And so then now I can open up the third one. 
This, th so this should be the is holding crouch. And so again here, we're just gonna delete all this. We'll add our local variable is pressed. That way we can paste everything here. And then we just need to grab the the crouch input key that we had created earlier. And then we'll check, make sure everything's right. And then uh, we will return if the key is pressed, if any of the keys are pressed. So again, this means that if the keyboard is pressed, if the game controller is pressed, if any of the, or like the game pad, or if any other controller is pressed, it will return true. Um, so the only negative part is if you're wanting to only capture the game controller, you'll have to make some uh, slight changes. Okay, so that's the basic setup that's required to be able to start doing all of the mapping on everything. Um, and so what, what this sets us up for is being able to set the input actions and then be able to go through our cleanup stages. So I'm going to start rolling through the input actions um, next. Starting with IA aiming, the easiest way to figure out where we need to go is to be able to search for what we're trying to replace. So if we bring up the find all and blueprints, we can look for the input action aiming, which is the legacy input action that we know that we're going to replace. So if you're not familiar with every, where everything is hidden, um, you can search for the original uh, input action, and then we can roll into replacing it with the new enhanced input action. If you're familiar with where things are, you can just kind of dig through, pull it up, and then uh, plug and play replacing. Um, I'm going to start with throwing logic because this is where I have everything started in the documentation. So I just wanted to make sure that it's easiest um, and kind of streamlined for everybody else. So we're going to replace this input action aiming here. So the way to do that is we're going to find IA aiming, which is our enhanced input action event, IA aiming. Um, I don't need to enlarge it like that. Uh, so here we are looking at the original input action, which is coming on released. So what we're going to do is pull out our completed action, delete the original, we can close this back up, um, pretty it up so it looks nice, save, and then now we're done with, with the throwing logic part. So now we can move on to the next part, which is going to be inside of the uh, normal FUP and uh, cover aiming. So here uh, we see that it's pressed and released. So we're going to do our IA aiming again. And then from in here, IA aiming, we're noticing that it's coming from pressed and it's coming from released. So pressed is going to be uh, started and then uh, released is going to be completed. And so we can just bring the completed down here. And then now we just have the ability to delete the original, slide this back in, and then now we are done. We can just save and move on to the next one. So the next one that we have is inside of the uh, melee attacks and stealth skills. And so again, I'm just double clicking on the results that I found in the search, and then I'm just going to find the IA aiming. And then again, here is pressed and released. So we're gonna grab started and we're going to do the starter part. We're going to go to completed, drop it off to the little node they have there, delete, shrink it, make it look nice, and then save, and then we are uh, done with that part. Very simple, easy replacements, following what the um, output is from the enhanced input will help with making sure everything is kind of streamlined on that. For the most part, things are going to be relatively uh, one for one. Next, we're going to focus on IA any key. So again, we can search and bring in the input action any key. And we can see where the input action any key is. We'll see that there is a whole bunch here in the um, buttons and inside of the uh, 
uh, player base here. So what we're going to do is again, we have press and we're going to come in here and do the IA uh, any key. And so then here uh, in the previous section, we were throwing in started when we were um, trying to trigger an event. Um, so started means we're just going to trigger as soon as the button is pushed and complete it as when we release. Um, otherwise, we're going to be using triggered, which means we're going to be triggering the, the event the entire time that the key is pressed. And the reason why is because a user may press it a little bit early, a little bit late, um, stuff like that. And so then that allows us to be able to um, kind of keep the triggering event going so that way we can make sure that the player is getting the expected behavior that they want. However, if we notice here on the original input action, the key is coming out and we can't do any type of key comparison here because we don't have the key that's mapped to the input action. We're just getting the input action. So we don't really need to worry about this currently. Um, so we can clean this up and so we also don't need the gamepad any key because we don't, we're not, we're not tracking that anymore. So what we can do is we can just delete this whole entire bit here. We don't need it, need it at all. And then what we're going to do is we're going to break this triggered link. And so then from triggered, we're going to do a for each. Now we have this beautiful for each loop and the input action, we're going to get the action pressed keys. So now we can get our list of keys and then we're going to plug that into our for each loop. And then from this for each loop, let me just bring this back a little bit. We're going to bring out a branch. <clears throat> and so what we're going to be checking here is if the input key is down. So now we can take the key, the individual key, and then we can is input key down. And so now we have to have a target so we can get the player controller. Oh, I don't want that one. I want get player controller at index. There we go. Okay. And so now I can return the player index here at zero. Um, so that gives us the ability to start changing indexes if you're having a multiplayer game or something like that in the future. Um, and so now we can plug this return value into this um, branch. And so now what that allows us to do is <coughs> if the key is pressed, if any key is pressed, then we can now move forward, right? And so just because the event is happening doesn't necessarily mean that the key is being pressed. It could be, it could not be, um, depends on how it's triggering. And so then now we can just um, trigger, uh, we, we can now trigger onto this branch to be able to figure out what we wanna do here. And so now, um, the last part that we want to be able to do is there is logic here for making sure that um, the key being used is gamepad or not gamepad. It, it's just being used for uh, debug purposes, which can be helpful. So we're going to grab the array element again, and we're going to do is gamepad key. Then we can um, try to beautify this a little bit and then plug that into this conditional. And so now what this allows us to do is um, if the key is a keyboard, we'll follow this top loop. Um, we'll set that the player is um, using a gamepad, which should be false. Um, and then now we can set it and then come in print that they're using gamepad. Otherwise we can print uh, a keyboard and mouse. Um, and so then the, the purpose behind that is just so that way, sometimes if you have multiple inputs in there and you're not sure if it's being triggered by the keyboard or the gamepad, we, we have the ability ability at that point to be able to get that uh, figured out during debug time. And so now we can just kind of fit this back into here and now we are ready to go. We are done with 
uh, that part. Next, we have inside of our um, uh, blueprint uh, button panel enhanced input. This is covered under the BP button enhanced, enhanced input uh, part. So um, we will go over that a little bit different, but the only reason I'm just calling it out is because if you do the search, it's in here. Um, however, in the documentation, there, there is a specific uh, tab for being able to handle this part. So now we're going to look at the 
look up mouse input axis. So this is going to be a 2D axis for up and down utilizing the mouse uh, look. So this requires a little bit of work to be able to get everything functioning properly. So again, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to replace the input axis with the input action. And so we're looking at the mouse. Um, and so we are just going to go when it's triggered, uh, we're going to split out the action value. And then here we're looking up. So we're going to be grabbing the Y for the up and down. <clears throat> and so we can remove this ax, uh, uh, the original input action. We'll pretty it up here real quick. And then we will do the same thing as well for the look left and right for the mouse. And so we're going to replace the input axis turn with I look mouse. And then here we're going to again pull triggered and then we're going to split the uh, input and then instead of grabbing the Y, we're going to grab the X. Okay, so it's already lined up there, so that looks pretty. Okay, so next, what we need to do is we need to remove the references where we're re where we're calling for the look and for the turn. So what we're going to do is uh, let's start with the turn. We're going to grab the find all, we're going to find uh, get turn. And so we're going to find that there's, you know, a bunch and calculating the aim offset, as well as inside of the aiming input. And so we're just trying to find where those locations are. And so we can start here. <clears throat> by finding, we'll start off at the top and we'll just find any values that need to be replaced here. And so we move over, we see the input axis here. So we're just gonna split here. Um, we're going to grab get I, oops, I look mouse, we'll grab the get, we'll split. Then here we're doing the ups, so we'll grab the Y. Um, let's see here, the cover input. Okay, so this place looks relatively simple and good at this point. Okay, so then if we come back down to the look left, right, was there anything else? I feel like there was more. Okay. So now we have the um, the left and the right. So this is the look mouse x axis. And so we have get turn here. So we can remove this, and then instead we're gonna get. Come on. I look mouse. Oop, I don't need the event. We'll split the structure. Then since we had turn, we're going to grab the X. And then we have the turn here. So we can just copy the previous from over here, paste it. We'll grab the X as well. Delete the get turn. And then beautify it there. And so that looks fine. And so then if we, again, search for our get turn, we can find calculating the aim offset here. So we have get turn and we have get uh, turn left, right. And so this get turn left, right is gonna end up being the uh, joystick. So we're gonna, going to ignore it for right now. So we're gonna grab the get mouse. We're gonna grab the X, replace get turn. And then that is in there. And then uh, we're gonna do the next get turn. And the aiming input, which should already be uh, 
uh, replace because we have the two that we already just did. And so I'm not seeing any more references. So if we research, get turn left, right. I'm not seeing any more just get turned. So that's fantastic. So we've replaced those. Okay. So now we know that the next one is going to be the get look up mouse. And so we're going to find where that is. And then here again, we're going to be looking for um, I look mouse. We'll split the structure. Okay, and so since we're doing the lookup, we know that it's going to be the Y. We can replace that. This is kind of an ugly, ugly spot. And then we have the second one in the same spot or same um, uh, blueprint here. Okay, so I guess I didn't copy. I look mouse split the structure drop in the y perfect okay so that one is done and now we just got to check for get look up and i don't see that referenced anywhere so it must be gone. Okay, perfect. Okay, so now what we need to do is refactor the um, camera and, and how everything is um, set up here. So what we need to do is back into the event graph with aiming input. We don't need both of them open for the same thing. Okay, so I'm gonna move the searching out of the way. And so what we wanna do here is, um, if we were to play, oh, let me save all. <clears throat> and then compile. So if we were to play this, Eventually it'll start up. Wow, okay. So, I'm aiming. What's gonna end up happening is um, my character is in turning all the time. So if I move slowly, they keep turning. If I just turn a whole bunch and then stop. They may not necessarily uh, always follow it. And so what ends up like here is a perfect example. So it's a little weird little bug. So if I move a little bit, then move back. So it's when you move a bunch, you stop moving. Character doesn't get the input because the mouse isn't moving, so they don't keep turning. So to change that expected, change that to the expected behavior, uh, what we need to do is go back into the uh, player base here. And then inside of the input, what we need to do is add a custom event. So we'll do a custom event, add custom event. And we're going to call this, um, let me zoom in here so you can see it, trigger update look. Okay, so what this event is going to do is when it's fired off, it's going to allow us to specifically target being able to update the character looking. Um, so the reason why is because um, as soon as the mouse is done moving, there's no more events being triggered, so the character isn't going to keep looking. Um, and so the behavior on this is a little bit different than how the 2D um, uh, input action ha was handled in the legacy behavior. So what we need to do here is pull out a sequence. So the sequence is gonna be one, then two. So on one, we're gonna come down to switch on input type so we can break this link. We're going to break this link. And then on one, again, we're going to come all the way back down here to this other switch. And then we're going to break this. And we're going to break this. 
Okay, so what we were doing initially is whenever there's input with the mouse, it's going to come in here and um, switch the input type or check the input type. And then, you know, on a mouse, it's going to handle the logic for updating the mouse movement. And then otherwise, if it's a gamepad, it's going to handle the movement for that. And so the issue that we run into is the character's not turning after we stop moving the mouse. So we created this event. And so now we need to be able to plug the event in. And so what we have is inside of this section here, we have the tick events. We're just going to grab this whole thing. We're going to slide them all the way out here. And then we're now going to add in trigger update look. And so with trigger update look, what, what this allows us to do is now every single time we have a tick, we're just going to update the, the look, whether the character is rotated or not. And so that's just going to help with, let me just beautify this here. And so that's going to help with being able to make sure that the character is constantly looking to where the mouse is. And so if we save this and we compile it, and then we run it, Now what we have is even when I move really fast, the character will still turn because on tick, the character is being updated to be able to do the turn. So we don't have that weird, strange uh, behavior. So with the look mouse out of the way, we're now going to start our look with the joystick. And so again, we're going to go back into the input aiming. So we can do a search again, but our input access for looking gamepad is right here. So we have input look up gamepad. So I look stick. I just named it the stick because you have a joystick on the gamepad and I guess you can have it be whatever you want. So we're gonna do triggered and then we're gonna split the axis value and then here we're going to grab the Y value because we want to look up. Uh, we'll remove the legacy input event. And so now we have this in here, which is exactly what we needed. And so then what we need to do here is um, be able to change this. So we have this get look left, right. And so what we want to be able to do here is um, I look mouse, oh, I want the um, look stick, and I don't want the event, I want the actual value here. So stick, we're going to split. And so this is going to be left, right. So it's not going to be the Y value, it's the X value. So we'll remove that. And then we'll just follow through here. And then we have another lookup gamepad. So this is going to be the Y value. And then we have another lookup gamepad. This is also going to be the Y value. And then that looks good from there. Okay, and then we have the second one down here. So I look stick. This is going to be triggered and then split. And then now since we're doing left to right, we're going to grab the X value. And then we have a lookup gamepad, so we can remove that. And since it's up, we know that it's going to be the Y value. And then that looks good there. And so then here we come through, um, get, get turn left, right. Um, get turn left, right is going to be replaced with the X value because we're 
working left and right. And then we have another get turn left right. So this is gonna be another X value. And another get turn left right, another X value. Okay, so that should be able to handle the majority of what we have set here. So now since we've modified everything here, what we need to do is be able to go through and change rest of the occurrences where these things are being called. So what we can do is do another uh, global search. And so we'll do get turn left, right. And so we know this is going to be the IA look stick and we're going to grab the X value because it's left and right. And so that was the only location that I saw the get turn left, right. That was still in here. So now what we need to do is find Okay, perfect. So now we need to find the lookup gamepad. And so now we know this is going to be replaced with I look stick. And we'll split the structure. And so this is going to be replaced with the Y value. And then we have the second one we need to look at. And so this is going to be replaced with the same thing. Bring out the Y value. Okay, and then next we have the just get look up. And so we'll come in here, just make sure we don't have any more instances of that. Fantastic. And then get look up. Um, and I don't see anything else in here, which is fantastic. Okay, great. So now we should be ready to uh, move on. Okay, so next we're going to move to the input axis for moving forward. And so we just need to find the initial event for this, which is inside of the movement area of the event graph. So we are going to replace that with the IA movement. And then from IA movement, we're going to go to triggered because we want it to trigger as long as the W is pressed. And then whenever you let go of the W, we also want that movement to happen as well. Um, just you know, if you have it only go when it's down, then when you let go, that that last tick uh, wouldn't wouldn't be counted. And so we just want both of them to count equally. And then here, uh, we need to split the structure, and then we're going to grab the Y value because we're uh, moving forward. So we're gonna grab the Y value and close it out there. And then we need to, uh, so we can just copy that. And then we can go down to the moving sideways. And so we can paste this in here. And again, we're gonna do the tr on triggered and on completed. And then we're gonna grab the X value because we're moving sideways. 
and then throw that in here as well. And delete that. And then that looks pretty good from there. And so, yep, nope, there we go. We forgot to put that one in there. Okay, so now we're good. <clears throat> so what we need to do is clean up the stragglers. So we are going to look for the three different input action getters that we have set for this. So we're going to look for get movement sideways. And every single get movement sideways, we're going to replace with get IA movement with the X variable. Okay, so then we're going to split the pin and then going to drag out the X. And then we have the, uh, we're going to cheat here. So we have the move forward. So this is going to be the Y. So we can just clean that up. And then we're just going to go down the list and do the same type of thing here. So I movement, split the pins, and then we know that sideways is X. We know that forward is Y. And we're just going to save each of these as we go along. So here's some more. I movement. Split the pin, X goes for sideways, Y goes for forward. And we had a second place. We'll do the same thing. So X for sideways and move in there. Okay, and so then this is a Boolean value that's being set. It's not the same one that we have. So now we have this other move sideways. A movement, so it's sideways, so we know it's going to be the X. And another sideways, so it'll be the X. And we have some more move sideways. Again, we know it's going to be the X. Move forward is Y, move sideways is X. This one's a little tricky looking because there's a little bit of overlap. Move sideways is X. And then Move forward. Is why. So, a quick note with the move sideways uh, input axis. 
and the move forward input access this is a local variable that the value is being set from the move forward and move sideways events Okay, so next we're going to start working on the migration for use. There's a couple steps in here that do make it a little bit complicated, but we should be able to make it through here without uh, too much issue. So just like the others, we're going to grab the IAUs, so the enhanced input action, and then we're going to map this here. So started goes to the branch, completed goes down to this little breakpoint here, then we can delete the original, and then beautify it here and then bam we're done that's relatively simple here as far as the bp uh character base goes but the rest of the the magic is going to happen inside of the uh bp button panel let's close some of this stuff here okay so the button panel is going to be here uh, but we need to be inside of the event graph. Um, so we can also find the button panel by coming in here, uh, blueprints, you can do BP button panel, and you'll find the button panel here. And so what we need to do is find where we have use in here. Uh, main use input right here. Okay, fantastic. So what we're going to do for starters is we have to replace this input action use. So I use 
And then we will do a started here and then a completed down here. We can move the original. Okay, and so this will allow the regular input action used to be able to be uh, utilized inside of the button panel. So now we can, you know, press F, for example, as a default button, and the button will be the button panel will be able to pick it up and start utilizing the the main use key. Um, but there is some additional cleanup that needs to get done. So we have this um, variable that is called, I'm just gonna type it here, um, get action key. Oh, right here, because we have this uh, get action key, which we don't need, right? So we're gonna delete this. And then on started, we can just go straight into the gate. We can just uh, do that. And so it's not called get action key, it's just called action key. And so if we come in here and we uh, find references, we can see where it's used. So we don't need any of this is the action key down. We can delete this and then we can just the, grab the IA use value is the use key actually pressed. Um, and then we can bypass it that way. Then we have the second version, second place where it's being used. We don't need to do this. We can just again, go straight to IA use, grab the value and plug the value in. And then we have where it's being used here in the slider. So we don't need to check if the um, player is still holding the button, right? Because uh, we're just grabbing the action key. And so we can just, again, replace that with I use and just see if they're still holding the button down. And then that's all we need to do for that part. So now, since we can check and see if anything is referencing this, it's not. So now we can delete that variable. We don't need it anymore. Done. So now we're gonna move on to um, the shoot action. So are we shooting? So we're gonna go first to the, um, Melee, because that's what's on here first. Um, we have the input action shoot. So what we can do is come in here, IA weapon fire. And so we just have that set here for firing. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do started and then we will do completed. We'll deplete or deplete, we'll delete that. And then now we have our second location which is here for shooting. And so here we can I uh, weapon fire. And again, we're gonna do started and we'll do completed. So now we do have additional work that we need to do in order to be able to get this to work. Um, and I'll show you the reasoning behind this because um, the input action is handled a little bit differently um, since we changed some of the logic earlier. down the, uh, the rifle shot. But one of our cleanup tasks later is to clean up how some of that stuff is handled inside of the um, construction script, which will mean that we're going to end up breaking this and deleting the rest of that stuff. So because we won't, we aren't keeping track of mouse and keyboard uh, input anymore. And so what is gonna end up happening if we don't make any additional changes Rough. Okay. So shoot. We only have a single, a 
single round coming out when we hold the trigger down. So in order for us to be able to fix that, we need to do ad ad additional work um, within the BP weapon component. So to get started in here, what we are going to do is look for, uh, we're gonna look at the logic up here. And so we have the assault rifle logic where we come into fire, we spawn our shots, and then we have this um, event that we set up over here for repeating shots. And then we set that event on a timer so that way we can continue to keep firing subsequent shots on the rifle or other type of auto weapons when we hold the trigger down. Um, and so the issue that we're going to run into is uh, we're setting that based off of the keyboard and the gamepad input, which we are no longer going to be utilizing. So what we need to do is just get rid of this whole part. Don't need that. And then instead, between the rifle shot restart and this branch, we're going to end up having to create a bunch more logic. So what we need to do is um, start by creating a um, local variable. Local variable, and we're calling it weapons fire input pressed so weapon weapons fire input pressed boolean default value is false so what we're going to do coming off of here is I don't even need that so we're going to come in here we're going to set this value to false uh, the reason why we're setting it to false is because if it gets changed to true later, we need to reset it to false before uh, coming in here. So now we're going to go and we're going to create a for each loop. And then what we need to do is create a uh, second variable. And so this variable is going to be called um, weapons fire input keys. And so this is going to be a key type. And the key type is going to be an array. And so then we are going to set this um, into here for, for the loop. OK, so now we're going to do a branch. So now we need to get our uh, conditioning here. So what we're going to do is we're going to get player controller so we're going to get player controller and we're going to is input key down right and so we need to feed this key into it So we're just going to pretty it up here a little bit so it's a little bit easier to see what's going on. Um, and so then we get this return value that we can plug right into here. And then if we find a true, then we can just set the weapons fire input to true. And then we can return to the branch. I'm just going to drop this stuff down a little bit. Um, otherwise, um, if we don't find a true, eventually we will um, just get a false. And so that's what we're, we just want to get to the false. Um, I deleted a little bit too much logic here. So what we want to do is, again, we're going to grab our weapons fire um, press. We'll do a get. And then we want to know if shooting is active. And so we want to grab an or. And then from this or, we're going to do an and statement. And then here, we're going to do rifle shooting loop open. Again, I shouldn't have deleted it, but I guess I did because 
I was rushing. Um, and then here, we're gonna plug this into Man, I'm really messing this up here. Okay, so then now what we're doing is if the weapon's input is pressed or if shooting is active and the loop is open, then we can continue to shoot. Um, otherwise, um, the shoot open will be set to false and then we'll eventually stop shooting, which is fantastic. That's exactly what we need. And so then, um, although that is great, we still have this um, shot release that needs to happen. And so inside of here, um, this logic is not going to satisfy at all what we're looking for. Um, and that's because we're not looking at the shot input gamepad, shot input keyboard, and, and that type of stuff. So instead, what we are going to do is we can just um, highlight this bunch of stuff here and we can delete it. We're, sh we're still gonna use this branch and so instead, we're going to come off of this branch, and then we're going to, I'll just grab the set from here. Um, we're going to need to set the default value for the weapons fire input press to false again, just because we're, we're start, starting off fresh here. And then again, we're going to do a for each. And we're gonna grab that weapons fire input. Throw that in here. And then we need to, again, grab the uh, player controller. And then is input key down. So we're gonna grab the mapping keys and then we're gonna make sure that the key is actually being pressed. And so then this will come off into a new branch. And so then we'll set this Boolean value and then this new branch is going to end up setting our weapons fire input press to true, and then what we wanna do at that point is we can then return here to the, uh, to the branch. Otherwise, we will complete and just come back to the branch as well. And so we're basically doing the same type of thing where we're grabbing the array of keys for firing, we're going to check if they're pressed. If they are, we set the, that that it is pressed. And then we're going to end up using that. Oh, I got to do my get here. And we're going to end up using the weapons fire input pressed to be able to return on this uh, branch to be able to figure out true we're shooting we're false, we're not shooting, and then now we can go and handle the rest of our logic as needed. Okay, so that's great, that's fantastic. Now we just gotta do one more thing, and that's all the way at the beginning of this um, trigger shot event. And so this trigger shot event is great for the initial setup. However, we need to be able to set that weapons fire array. Um, uh, the input keys array. And so what we're going to do is we're going to pull off a branch and then pull this back just a little bit more. And then we need to be able to set the weapons fire input keys. And so what we're going to do is we need to change this to have an input and the input is going to be weapons fire um, input keys, doesn't matter uh, what we name it. We're gonna make it a type key. 
and then uh, change it to an array. And so what we're going to do is um, check is valid index. And so what we're doing is checking to see if the first index is a valid object. Um, and if it is true, then what we're going to do is set the value of our local variable. Um, the reason why we need to have this is because if we don't check to see if the index is valid when we're not passing in the value from uh, AI, a turret, or something of that nature, then the we're, since we're not checking, the uh, array is set to an all instance, and then it crashes when we get to the iteration later, the stuff that we just set up. So we need to make sure that it's valid. If it is, then we can set it. Um, otherwise, we don't set it, and it stays the initialized um, um, array size zero. And so it just iterates through zero objects, and it just continues as normal. So now what we need to do is find the references to this. Um, but this is only going to search here. So we need to bring over our find and blueprints. And then we need to find the one that happens inside of the BP place, uh, BP player character base. And this happens inside of the shooting. And so now you can see that we have this weapons fire, uh, input keys, right? And so if you remember um, earlier, we had worked on setting our variables. So uh, variables, TSP input keys, and then we had the weapons fire input key. So now we can get, and we can set the value to this. And so then what this allows us to do is be able to pass in that value um, from the player because we have the mappings for the player, and then we can check to see if the keys are down. If we did this for the turret and for the AI and stuff, then it's gonna check to see if the player has the key down, and that's gonna determine if the AI or the turret is shooting, which is not expected behavior, so that's why we don't want that to happen. And so now, if we compile and run, It's not shooting, which is fantastic. Okay, so I missed one step in the BP component. I needed to be able to take the false out and skip all the way to the um, set here. Missed that one part, so that should uh, potentially fix some of this stuff up. Okay, so that finishes up the uh, IA shoot, so now we can move on. So quick update, um, I realized um, during testing to make sure everything was running um, that I did miss a couple things. So the issue that I have is that when I let go of the fire button, It keeps shooting. Which is not supposed to happen. So what I found that I missed, I missed two things. Wait for it to catch up here. So in the weapons component, um, this was uh, attached to the wrong um, the wrong portion of, of the graph. So instead, 
shooting open is supposed to be checked to true, and this and is supposed to go to the branch conditional. Secondly, in the um, base graph here, so in the get action pressed, um, I didn't bring over the array to the for each loop. So when I was getting the actions pressed here, um, nothing was ever being returned and that was causing an issue because inside of the um, shooting portion of the uh, blueprint here where we want to pass in the list of keys, uh, that, that would always be the empty list and that was causing issues with holding down the shooting button. So now with those two fixes, that should resolve that little bug. And I will annotate in the video at the points where those are to make sure that those mistakes are not repeated. And fixed. Okay, so the last big batch of stuff that we have to do here for fixing our input keys is to finish the changes needed on the BP button panel. And so if we come back into the event graph here. <clears throat> so we're gonna start with our ability to receive any input. And so we're checking Input keypad or uh, input keyboard and input gamepad, which we do not need to be doing anymore because um, both the keyboard and the gamepad are hooked up to the same thing. And so, uh, what we can do is start by deleting the gamepad, and then we will um, fix up some of this stuff as well. So we don't need to be checking if it's keyboard um, and then we won't have the key anymore to be able to um, track anything. So we don't need to worry about the uh, current key. And so what we are going to do is we are going to uh, receive any key and then IA any key. And then what we are going to do is we're going to go from started to the branch, get rid of the legacy input action. And then we have the remaining logic that was there and then we can close it out in here, which is fantastic and great and all that we need. <clears throat> okay, so now what we need to do is we need to be able to um, finish the logic here for checking on a uh, keyboard hit. So we can double click this and we can come in here and uh, we can see that we have all of this logic here to that goes through and checks um, if the, it's a mouse or if it's a gamepad key or, or whatever, which we don't need to be doing 
that stuff anymore. Um, so what we need to do is to clean this stuff up so that way we have the ability to um, just filter the keys that we're using and then be able to uh, go from there. So again, we don't need to be doing this equal check on whatever the key is. So we can come out here, we could remove the input key because we, we don't care checking the uh, equalness on that. Um, so we can remove this part down here. Um, we're gonna pull the uh, keyboard hit back and then um, get player controller. And then from here, we're gonna do an is valid. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay, so now we have our is valid. Okay, so what we wanna do here is, so now that since we know that we are valid, um, if we're not valid, then what we're gonna do is we're just going to return here. Um, and so we can get rid of this check for gamepad thumbstick. We don't uh, really care about that. And so what we're going to do is just come straight to this branch. And then from here, we're just going to grab from the player controller and do what is input key down. And we're just gonna see if the current expected key that we have set is down, right? So, bring this up just to clear a little bit of space in here. And so we're gonna do this twice. So throw this into the or. And so what we're doing is we don't need to pass in a key and then see if that key is mapped to anything that the player is doing. We have the expected keys, so we're just going to check to see if the player controller has that key down and then move on from there. And then, so now since we have that done, we can now go back to the event graph and we're gonna see that our um, uh, function here is broken. So we're gonna re remove the input that we had on there and then now it has fixed itself. So we don't have anything too crazy to do there. Um, we can beautify this if we want. Done, okay. Now we have to move to this other um, receiving any key. And so what we're gonna come down here and see is that we do the same type of thing where we're initially receiving the input action for both keyboard and the gamepad, which we don't need. So we can do just the IA any key. Um, again, we are going to remove just the um, gamepad track here. Um, and then we don't care if it is keyboard. We don't care for this branch here. Um, we're not tracking the key. And so we're just gonna do this um, any key straight to the branch, doing our logic check on the uh, type. And then we need to go and modify, oh, we don't need to do this set any key. So now we need to modify the logic for pressing the key repeatedly. And so again, we're gonna see the same type of thing here where we're taking this key in and now we're checking to see if the keys are equal, um, which we don't need to be doing. Um, that's uh, extra logic and extra overhead. Um, so what we're gonna do is remove the input again. And then th just as before, get player controller, grab off it is valid. Uh, we don't need to check for thumbstick. 
Um, if it's not valid, then we're just going to oops, we're just going to do the return node here. Let me give it a little bit more space. Um, otherwise, we can get rid of this, and then we're just going to do is input key down, which is out of context here. So is input key down. can just drag off here, throw in the target again. Um, and then we're just gonna have this or. And so now what we're doing is we're just grabbing the controller if it's valid. Um, we'll, we'll, we will continue. And so then we're just going to check to see if the expected key is down. If it's down, then, then we're moving on. And so we have that saved. Now we can go back to the event and we'll see, oh, we're throwing in this bad uh, input key. So if we remove the bad input and then clears itself up, and then we'll just do a quick beautify here and then we're done. Um, and then we should be good to go from that part. Um, so now since we have all of that done, what we can do is come in here and we can find the uh, current key that we kept referencing so many times. Uh, current key, we we'll are just check to see if there's any references. And so there's just a reference in the comment. Um, but there is no actual current key in here, which is great. So now we can just remove the current key. Okay. And so now we get to save and compile and so then if we come back out here um, what we can do is we can add a um, button we'll add another button okay and so then um, this button will just come in and make sure, and then we'll do a uh, press and order. That way we can run and make sure that everything is looking right for our use in any key function. Okay, so now we can begin the final stages of the cleanup. And so this should be relatively straightforward. So if we go into the um, BP base character, uh, BP player character base, we go into the functions, open up the construction script. We had already detached all of this. We don't need it anymore. So we can just um, delete it. Don't need that anymore. Um, and then the last thing that we can do is we can go into our project settings. We'll uh, save everything first. Um, and then we can go into our uh, project settings now. We can go into the inputs. And then we have our original mapping files here. And so we can delete these because we're not referencing them anymore. And so we're going to close that. We're going to save everything again. Oh. 
uh, we can compile everything. Okay, so we have a couple places here that still need to be uh, fixed. Um, so what we're going to do is add in our IA movement. Oh, I don't want this one. So our IA movement here. So we're going to split this value. And so remember forward is Y and uh, left and right uh, is going to be the X. So now we can delete these two. So we have that saved. And then now we can go into here. So this is get turn and this is also going to be IA movement and then split the pins. And then since we're turning, this is going to be X. IA turn, right? No, IA turn is not movement. Aha, there we go. Okay, no, so IA turn is not movement. IA turn is actually the IA look mouse. And so then this is going to be, um, oh, I don't want the, so look mouse. We're going to split the struct here and then we are going to change this from um, turn and we want this to be the X value. If I can remember which one it was connected to. Okay, there we go. So top one. So save, and then we'll compile again. Awesome, fantastic. Okay, so now we're gonna close and we can make sure we can open our project again. And so the last thing that I got um, an issue with when I was first doing this was that um, when I would go to open the project, it would fail. Um, it might uh, the the main the main culprit being you missed or I missed a previous step for removing some of the legacy mapping. So we'll. we'll make sure that the project opens up and troubleshoot any of that last minute stuff. Um, also previously I had experienced issues with the um, uh, blacklist legacy uh, naming, but that doesn't appear to have caused an issue. So now we're back in our project and everything is working without there being any type of uh, references to the legacy user input. If you've made it to this part of the video, then that means you've completed the tutorial. Congratulations. I know it was a time intensive task, but I promise you it, the time is well worth it. The experience as a developer when the enhanced input is in place is much better. 
Uh, if you do have any issues or questions, uh, please feel free to leave a comment in the video or reach out to me in Discord. I am in the Discord for the third person shooter kit. Um, otherwise, if you have anything you would like for me to do in a future tutorial, please feel free to ask. I'm 